Hello, everyone, and welcome to the most, the next, the current episode of Star Trek Adventures set in the Lasai Expanse. Um, it seems that, for whatever reason, my players don't have much in the way of family lives, so we're going to be able to game on the 27th, which is Black Friday. So, no two-week vacation for me. Cries. Anyways. <laughs> uh... Anyways, let's get back right on the show, which I believe it is going to be Commander Hadrix has the log this week. Yes, and my sultry voice, too. Remember when we get... Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> no, go for it. I was going to say, since he screwed up, we get uh, momentum. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> First <laughs> officer's log, star date, 845.6. And Cordia is really starting to show its personality, and the vessel and crew are starting to work harmoniously together. After some minor environmental purging from the Togolau event, and some minor drills with the supervisory staff and all departments from the mind control incident, we are finally making our way to the great library of the Lashunt. Seeing a historical, cultural, and social repository for an entire culture fascinates me in a way most of the others don't know since us Talaxians usually pass along our history through verbal narrative. I've personally gotten a report from Alarak in Sciences noting that some of the scans, during some of the scans of the Expanse, they've gotten information stating that one of the planets in a nearby system has been annexed by the Nalu. A follow-up report by Ensign Dresden shows that this planet appears to be changing at a global level, which could be Tikafasi. It looks a lot like they're changing the world to become habitable. I've talked to the captain and very possibly might be trying to see if we could actually go there. Being able to actually see this process firsthand compared to what I've actually read up when I worked with the Nalu before would be really interesting to see considering that most terraforming you see is normally done on a more you know gravel sense of more firm sense as opposed to for an aquatic a species but we will see what happens and to log okay so uh, as has been mentioned I think the first scene shall be in the captain's ready room well uh Captain Bashir is pres is sitting with his uh, with his uh, cup of Andorian coffee or whatever it is he chooses to drink in that cup uh, when there is a chime at the door. Ironically enough, I just made green tea, so I guess it'll be green tea. Okay. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> chime, enter in walks Commander Hadrix with a, a series of pads. Commander? Captain, um, any thoughts or decision on the Nalu situation that we have going on? I've been wanting to go to the library for four weeks now, so I think we could probably take time off to stop there first, too. <laughs> I mean, I understand... The Great Library is a big find. I mean, I'm personally also interested in that, too. However, I've never seen... I think the easier way to say it, it would be um, hydroforming. They're trying to reform the planet so it's habitable to the Nalu. I'm very curious, and that's why we're out here. I think that's a great idea. Once again, the library can wait. It'll, it's not going anywhere. Unless it's going to be like one of those Pompeii situations. But... I don't know all about that. Anyway, <laughs> I think it would be perfect for us to stop by. Excellent. I will inform the um, science stations to be ready for um, in-depth scans, especially of the crust and the structure of what they're actually doing to it. Thank you, Captain. I appreciate this. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing what's going on, too. So do I. <laughs> One quick scene change. Hadrix, you step out of the captain's office and onto the bridge. 
where the captain is not there. Primrose? Set a core... Crap, do we actually have a name for this system out of character? Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Um, it is, at a close map, I believe it's called the Esrim system. Are we sure it's not the DRAM system? Uh, nope, that's a completely different system, um, completely random access memory. <laughs> okay, back in. Primrose, set a course for the Esrim system, um, maximum warp. Of course, Commander. And some more, um, you want to get with Alarak in, um, down in Science Lab, we're going to go ahead and we're going to check out this, um, terraforming that they're going to be doing on the Nalu planet. I'm very excited to see, see this in full color, so can we get anybody we can that has any kind of um, environmental knowledge or whatnot on that? I'll see who I can pull up. I'll also uh, coordinate everything. I can head down to Astrometrics and get a, uh, the planetary sensors up and running. Ooh, that would be exciting. Yes, please. Thank you. And with that, I go to Astrometrics. All right. You run up there. Uh, Ensign Moose, or sorry, Lieutenant Commander Moose sees you heading to the turbulence. Uh, well, I got to get down to engineering anyway. I'll follow you down, kid. I assume he calls you kid. I have no idea. He's an old man by now. <laughs> I, I bet he calls pretty much any one of us kid. I mean, he technically outages everyone. So, yeah. <laughs> Collectively. <laughs> He's like, get off my lawn, young, young whippersnapper. <laughs> He's like... Uh, Doctor, um, have you ever read up on any terraforming events or anything um, about that? Or have you read up on anything? Have you gotten any of the notes about the Esrim system and the Nalu um, terraforming event? Um, I've read over some, but can't say I've really done it in too much detail. Uh, sciences, other than the medical side of things, uh, wasn't necessarily my strong suit. When I was in the academy, I understand that. Me, I understand that. I mean, engineering is not my biggest forte, but somehow I figured something out. The main thing yeah. I'm worried about is seeing if there's any other biological matter on the planet that might be getting affected by the Nalu. I mean, I know that the Nalu is a okay out of character. Is the Nalu what considered a protectorate, a native? Like a native species to the Lasai Expanse, or just uh, like... they they are a native species to the Lasai Expanse, and they're more of a monarchy. Gotcha. So I mean, it's more, and then just more. We're we're peaceful terms, but there's no formal agreement. Correct. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Doctor, I'm just not sure about how they act with anything. That's already going on. Like I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned. I, I know of, I know the Nalu. I know a little bit about their culture and relations. But I just, I'm worried about if there's going to be any kind of ecological issue to anything on planet. So, if we start finding out anything, getting any scans early before we get on site, I would like to be, well, myself and the captain informed probably as sooner rather than later. Of course. Um... I can certainly try and read things over in more detail and try and get a better idea. Excellent, excellent. That's that's perfect. I mean, it's... Thank you, Doctor. I appreciate that. <laughs> and Fortaleza will sort of just reach under their chair where there's probably a semi-small stack of pads they've just been sort of ignoring and just start scrolling through them <laughs> while we're en route. It sounds like, it sounds like half my work stuff. <laughs> uh about five minutes or so after uh, Primrose, uh, yeah, about ten minutes after the course change, uh, Primrose, your systems read good. Uh, you get a call from down from Engineering, uh, Captain. This is uh, Eng or Engineering to Bridge. I got Hendrix some here. I'm getting a weird energy bill, uh, energy variance build up here in the engine core. 
I'd like to drop out of warp and investigate it, please. Don't want to be too careful. I uh, don't want to be too cautious. I understand. Uh, will do. Primly Rose, um, drop, to, drop to impulse and let's keep an ear with engineering about any kind of issues. Uh, Lieutenant Nix, anything that you can detect going on? Nix. Uh, actually, good time for momentum. Someone pick up Nix. Uh, if Nix could please do me a communications roll. Uh, this is going to be a zero difficulty test. And the ship can assist with computers plus... Or, sorry. Nix can roll a insight plus engineering. And the ship can roll communications plus engineering. Difficulty zero. I can the grab the ship. Oh, okay. Go ahead. You can get the ship. I'll grab Nix. Look, I know hey, that the ship... I know that the ship just got an upgrade and everyone wants to play with her, but, you know. Excuse me, I played with the ship plenty last week, and I was doing pretty Ooh, good. Phrasing? Don't, don't wreck my streak last week. You said phrasing. <laughs> you said it was communication engineering for Correct. the ship? Yep. And Nix is doing... Uh, Nix is inside engineering, please. Inside... Nice. Engineering. Would any of her focuses work? Um, I don't Communication know. systems. Ah, uh, yes, that would work. Twenty. Mm -hmm. Applicable focus. Let's go. Nice. Uh, so that's four successes. Four momentum. Nice. What okay. do we find? This is what I get for giving you guys a zero difficulty challenge at first. Oh well. Say And we appreciate it. <laughs> do you now? Okay, we'll have to change that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nix, you discovered that there, that approximately uh, two minutes ago, the deflector dish, uh, there a uh, weird, p ah, the while well, the deflector dish is doing its job, you know, deflecting things left, right, center, and square, as is going at warp, it's kind of its job. Um, there, it seemed to uh, run aground or run over a strange. Um, not a uh, strange subspace distortion. It wasn't sure what it was. Uh, it deflected it as it best it could and continued on with its job. Uh, Nix will throw the data up on screen for the commander to see. It seems we hit, well, a sandbar. To put it in old Earth terms. Okay, you need to clarify that for us that didn't live on Earth. Well, to be fair. I'm just referring to anyway. Never mind. Uh, something that like it's a subspace shallow area that we deflected, we ran over, but there's not telling what it is. Ah, uh, low. Gotcha. At that point, the ship goes to red alert as um, the open communication to engineering. Um, Moose basically shouts, "Something's filling this place up with water. I'm evacuating." As the sound of what sounds like 50 fire hoses in the back uh, of his uh, uh, panicked. Uh, Nix is good. Nix will throw the schematic of the ship up to uh, have like the view of the environmental systems on the main screen. Uh, yeah. So. Ender, you were red. You signaled red alert. <laughs> As I come running out of my ready room. <laughs> and no, you just see. <laughs> You just see the video feed from engineering as it's filling with water. All right, who decided to make engineering a pool? Uh, so what's most interesting about this is that the water is literally coming from nowhere. Um, engine. Um, the evacuation of engineering takes less than five minutes, thankfully, because in, and uh, ensign or Lieutenant Commander Moose. Ah, Lieutenant Commander Moose initiates the seal-off procedures that are typically used to uh, prevent or protect as much of the ship as possible from a warp core breach. Um. Captain, we seem to have a serious water issue in engineering. It looks like it's starting to flood for no apparent reason and no apparent source. That's unusual. Uh, can we get a scan of engineering? Uh, 
sure. Uh, yeah. Um, Thank you. I guess this would either be a Lagos, a Nix, or I suppose anyone could run it. Who depends wants? on what. Depends on what discipline we're doing, because Nix has an engineering of four. Hmm. Um, this is probably going to be a science-based scan. Uh, Insight science. Um, ship can assist with sensor science. And if you have anything along the ways of subspace distortions, uh, wormhole physics, anything along those lines. Well, Nick, you know, the, science too, so no. the, the funny thing is, she's not on the bridge, but you know who might actually be able to help with this? Is good old Ensign Beckett Boimler. <laughs> <laughs> because they have, like, astrological phenomena and temporal phenomena as focus. Mm-hmm. I have temporal mechanics, but... <laughs> no, this isn't water from the future or past, I'm afraid. Damn. <laughs> I mean... You could call more. He has sensor operations, physics, and astrometrics. Yeah. Well, the ship's at red alert, so you know, uh, time is Soon. going to time is going to be a thing. Uh, engineering has just literally filled to the brim, and water is still pouring in. What? Well, what was the uh, attribute and discipline again? I know it was uh, science for insight, the discipline. Uh, insight science or. Yeah. Oh, insight science um, and sensor science difficulty of two. Uh, Primrose could do it. She's shooting. She has sensor operations. She's shooting with for a thirteen with insight science. Okay, go for well, it. Why not? Let's let's let Primrose get the activation. Okay. Um. I will. Uh. Yeah, sure. Let's take a momentum for a third die just to be sure. I mean, you have it. May as well spend it. Ooh. There's your two that you need. Who's got the ship? I'll grab it. Okay. I said sensor science? Uh, yep, sensor science, please. There's three successes, so one momentum right back to you. Well, there seems to be a, a small rift that has opened up in main engineering that opens to into that is a breach in subspace. And through that, water is pouring like a fire hose is just not enough. Um, imagine someone is opening the door on a submarine underwater. And that's about how much water is coming in. Uh, Captain, there seems to be a tear in this garden has a hard concept of this uh, reality I guess that uh, is causing water to pour into engineering so basically it's it's flowing from nowhere but it's still coming here precisely there is a small uh, groan as a damage report comes in from Deck 18, where main engineering is. That water is now flooding through corridors, sections, or fl- flowing through the corridors. Emergency force fields are holding, but... Uh, We're going to have to seal yeah. bulk. Emergency transporters are operational. Uh, Ms. Dr. Ferliza, please report to sickbay. On my way. What deck is Astrometrics on? Uh, Astrometrics, um, I really should have made come up with a cemented deck plan before I did this episode, I'm realizing. Uh, let's call Astrometrics deck 11. Okay. Yep. Um, question out of character, mm-hmm. or kind of in character. Would more um, see the results of the scans uh, from the science station in Astrometrics? I would assume that given 25th or 25th century levels of engineering, you could do a quick status or a quick tie into your console from wherever. So, yeah, you have a basic idea of what's going on. Okay, so seeing the results from Nix and uh, Nix's scan and having the subspace eddy thing that we ran through, and Primrose saying that you know the tear in subspace, Moore is going to do two and two together and try to do. Uh, 
aerial uh, space scan and see if he can map the subspace eddy that we ran into. Sure. Um, let's, yeah, astrometric sounds like a good thing here. Um, reason science. Uh, ship can assist with sensor science. I'm going to throw a couple threat to increase the difficulty 18 to 20. And let's call this a difficulty of three. I can grab the ship. Okay. Um, I'm going to use... Uh, part of me wants to pop my determination. Part of me just wants to use cautious. <laughs> I'd say use the cautious. Use okay. Cautious. I'll use cautious. I'll... I'll because, you know, the science don't lie, and I've got this as values just per work perfectly for this. Fair but enough. I'll just use cautious and do a third men uh, a momentum for a third die. And you said astrometrics absolutely mm -hmm. works as a focus. Plus, you want to just pop off later. <laughs> okay, that's four successes, unless you want to reroll one. Raising. No, nah, I'm good. Okay. Just one momentum. Uh, so, scanning the uh, surrounding area uh what you find to be what you find interesting is that uh lo your long range sensors did not notice uh this ah, sorry uh just let me get my mental ducks in a row here before i start blathering in five different directions uh so yours uh, what you have learned is that whatever you ran aground isn't there anymore um, you're not entirely sure what it was, only that it's not there, and that the, and that whatever it was was an isolated thing, uh, as in you don't see any other uh, similar phenomenon in the area. Wait, was it isolated or was it isolated? Because maybe it was a dark matter iceberg. Iceberg no. right ahead. Okay, we've now turned into the Titanic, everybody. I'm sorry, I can't believe you guys haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, I mean, it's fitting from McCall, the captain. McCall, why do you keep us around? I have no idea. Think it's of the world. Apparently it's not for my amusement, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh... I'm hurt. I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm hurt. I'm Chris. Uh... <laughs> oh, I forgot oh. you're a dad, and that physically hurt me. <laughs> the sound. Okay, okay. This is just how this is going okay. to be. <laughs> For every pun, I'm flooding another deck. <laughs> uh, deflector, uh, deflector control is reporting uh, two members trapped inside. Uh, as water pushes a, pushes hard against their uh, door. Is their compartment flooding? Not yet, but if the, you know the structural, if the uh, emergency yeah. force fields yeah. fail, then yeah. yeah. So more will chirp up. Uh, Bridge, I've run scans. It seems like whatever we hit was an isolated incident, and there's no trace of what is there. Um, but it must have done something because uh, water doesn't come from anywhere uh, or from out, out of nowhere. Uh, laws of physics kind of dictate that. Primer Strange question. Stop. Can we transport the water out? Um, quite possibly. Um, How fast is it coming in? Uh, faster than we'd be probably able to transport out. Transport it out. Mm. If we can isolate the subspace tears, then we could potentially seal the rifts. <laughs> well, while you guys figure this out, we're going to cut to sick bay. Oh, good. Yep. Joy. Lots of joy. Uh, down to sick bay where lots of people who aren't needing to be here are still kicking around. Uh, um, Dr. Feliza, you want you uh, rush in put on while uh, getting dressed in your lab coat. Uh, you see uh, Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt is, seems to have left his leg behind, his prosthetic one. Oh. His regular one is still attached. Uh, he is 
um, breathing, or he's coughing quite heavily. Um, and with him is the other characters that he had. He heroically went back and saved, which was Zach and the unconscious now Lou Kelsos Mad. Uh, Kelsos Mad seems to have taken a significant, uh, seems to have been caught off guard by everything, and the and is suffering a major head wound, and is currently being treated by Doctor Quiff and Lieutenant Krim. Okay. There's, um, luckily, I was just caught on fire, and that water put her out. <laughs> <laughs> that explains the smell of burnt hair, specialist. And I'll walk over to uh, both Krim and Quith. So, what seems to be... Obviously, he's not conscious. Uh, what's wrong with him internally, if anything? Um, Dr. Quiff looks up from his tricorder. Um, severe concussion. It appears that he was attempting to analyze the portal when he took a fire when he took a massive amount of water at high pressure to the face knocked him straight into a support console and knocked him straight out he should recover okay good uh lieutenant commander where's the leg left it behind it was a bit heavy and i it was a choice between the leg or the tellerite Stupid me, I chose the Tellarite. <laughs> of course, well, um... While we're figuring this out, um... I do have some plans for a cybernetic prosthetic I can get for you. Don't know, just... I like the old... I like the one I had. It was reliable. Don't Open worry, as soon as we figure this out, we can get the old leg back, but I think for some of the rescue efforts we're going to need to be doing on this ship, I'm um, going to need you on your feet, so... Was that a joke, Doctor? You can take it as one as you, if you wish, and I'm going to set to work either building or, at this point, maybe replicating a cybernetic <laughs> leg for him. Well, since he's stuck here, am I clear to go? I probably should take a look at engineering. A specialist? Engineering is underwater, literally. Well, that's not good. That's why I should probably go take a look at her. You can look at it once it's not flooded anymore. Um, if any of you need me, um, I don't assume that this thing behind the office here is maybe like a... Wait, no, I can probably just use that lab off to the side of my office to make a cybernetic leg, right? Oh, yeah. That's the, yeah, the thing with the cylinders, like your lab and whatnot. Back here is the access-only um, place where they keep all the happy drugs and some of the sad wink, drugs. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Yes. <laughs> it's also soundproof so that you can go in there and scream when somebody really pisses you off. It's, it's like the walk-in freezer at a restaurant. I get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I will set go to that lab and set to work making a cybernetic leg for our uh, dear chief engineer here, mm -hmm. okay. which, which will finally give me a chance to use my cybernetics focus. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, difficulty two. Um, no, yeah. one, no assistance, uh, but uh, let's do reason plus medicine. Cybernetics. Works for me. Uh, I will take a momentum for a third die. Okay. Well, that's uh, two successes and one complication. Parent figure. I can ignore that. Aw. Aw. <laughs> Actually, let me double check to see if I have to be assisted on this. Uh, just so I'm not just... This character... <clears throat> okay. It does specify that there do have to be multiple characters involved. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I'm just going to bank that as threat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Doctor, as you're doing, as you're busy doing this, um, you're treated to the um, joy of two emergency beamins, uh, two two crewmen from uh, deck 19 uh, that were 
in the bah, in the unfortunate location of being underneath or being in one of the auxiliary cargo bays when the roof caved in and collapsed several t- pounds of gushing water on them are dragged in and laid in bed. Uh, Zach, you are they conscious or unconscious? Uh, they one is unconscious, uh, the other one is conscious and coughing up a lot of water. Okay. Um. That's it. I'm out. Uh, have I finished the process of making the leg by the time this happens? I would say fairly close to it, yeah. You're just letting the replicator do its 3D print thing. Okay, so probably need to wait just a couple minutes and it'll yeah. be good then. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to lift the unconscious one onto the now empty bio bed. Um, uh, Commander Reinhardt, I'm... Yeah, yeah, Do you need not... any help getting to that chair between the bio beds? You know, back in my day, they had things called crutches. Do you still have those? <laughs> uh, do I? <laughs> I would yeah. say yes. I would say yes, one, but... There was that one girl from Deep Space Nine that had uh, <laughs> the crutches. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'd probably have, like, a... Uh... Not necessarily like a crutch, but those ones that are kind of like, uh, they kind of like attach to your arm. Yeah. If you know what I'm yeah, talking about. Like oh, like the polio yeah. ones. Yeah. Yes, yeah. those ones. Yep. And I'll hand that over to him. Good enough. Let me know when it's ready, Doc. You got other yep. people to worry about. I'll go and do what I can. And he'll saunter out after Zach. And, uh, Doctor, as you're busy trying to figure out. Or just healing, you know, getting these people up and running. After about four or five minutes, uh, Dr. Quiff reports that Kelsos Mad is... His uh, head trauma has been successfully repaired and he is ready to regain consciousness. Okay, um... Bring them out of it slowly, please, Vid. If we do it quickly and... It's never fun. It's never fun if you do it quickly, so... No. No, especially not with uh, individuals of superior physical might. Exactly. Like a band-aid, just rip it off. <laughs> You're not here, Zach. <laughs> and yet you still hear him in your head. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Is Zach I know, I telepathic? We'd all be driven <laughs> insane. <laughs> no, actually, he's a Q. <laughs> no, I nope. cannot live with that. Space him. Space nope. him. <laughs> Nope, there are some lines even I as a GM won't cross. The Q Zach is not is one of them. Uh, uh, Kelsos Mad groans and spits up a bit of water and sits up. Uh, and then he he realizes where he is, uh, grabs Doctor Quith by the scruff of his neck and pulls him down. Hey 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 hey. <laughs> Right. <clears throat> Hydro mine. What? He... What is that? He looked. He qu- Are we under attack? Has the Fathom um... delivered any? Um, or has the Fathom or any of our emissaries attacked yet? Hmm. Right. I mean, there's a bunch of water flooding the ship. I'm not sure if that would be this fathom S attacking us. That would be because we ran across a hydro mine. Okay, you're going to have to explain what that is to me really quick. I don't know how it works. It's how the it's how my people protect their bear, their territory. At least they used to. Probably still have them around, obviously. It opens a link back somewhere, somehow, and drowns their victims. So, for lack of a... This is my uninformed way of putting it. It's basically a bomb, but with water, essentially? He nods. Yeah. Yes. That's... Yes. No ship is built to withstand pressure, like a Nalu ship can. Water will flood everywhere. Water will drown you. 
Is there a way to stop them? He shrugs. I don't know. Ah, great. Now we're going to have to get the big brains. There's, um, a, there's a pop as on the bridge. Um, the deck below and uh, deck, I believe we're up to deck 20, is now encountering a significant amount of water as the water continues to flow through en from engineering. Thankfully, it flows downward first, so you have a bit of time, but yeah, uh, there goes, um, what was on deck 20? Oh yeah, uh, your waste and environmental systems had better be working, because now no one can get to them. Unless you're in a hydro suit or a, you know, I shouldn't give you ideas, that's what you guys are for. <laughs> Um, and I'll just tap, Feliz will just tap their comm badge. Um, Lieutenant Commander Feliza to, uh, bridge slash senior staff, whoever can hear me. This is more, I can hear you, doctor. Excellent. Um, okay, so, um. Bridge, on. Go on, doctor. Apparently, what we are encountering at the moment is something known as a hydro mine. Um, is a weapon used by some of the Nalu species uh, in order to, uh, I guess, destroy enemy ships via water pressure um he doesn't Kelsa's man unfortunately does not know how to stop this but we at least have some kind of lead as to why this is happening now thank you doctor appreciate it let us know if you find out any more. Hadrix, if we would have went to the library, we wouldn't have this problem. Can we get contact with the Nalu? Yes, Captain. I'll try to set up relations with them real fast. Lieutenant Lagos, can you try to set a um, comm channel to... Okay, what would be... what? what... Her Highness, uh, yeah. <laughs> on the to the consulate, to the ambassador, to the to... prime minister. Yeah, the queen or whatever. Yeah. Somebody at the Nalu. <laughs> There's a yeah, way to yeah. stop this. Uh, Lieutenant Lagos, can you can you send um send a message to the Nalu home world? Yes, <clears throat> yes, Captain. De uh, uh, nah. Ah, the, 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 the. sorry, sir. Mm. Uh, sending a ah, sending a request or a priority signal to Nalus. It may take. It'll be a little while before anyone responds, though. Um, How about this terraforming planet? Can we get contact to them? Good idea, sir. That's why you're the captain. Redirecting signal. I just give, I just give Lagos the side eye for that one. <laughs> He is too busy, or pretending to be, to pay you any attention. Yeah, I bet. Uh. Well. So, uh, rough... Uh, are you guys going to sit around and wait for a response? Uh, force fields aren't working... Well, force fields work, but the problem is, is that pressure builds up so much it yeah. break through. Yeah, pressure builds up. Uh, it's the Titanic situation. Do you try to contain it and let the pressure build up in only a a few things, or do you let the water flow through flow freely and you know save your sh save more of the ships and sh you know it's up to you. Our ship can land, can't it? Not nicely, but yes. <laughs> Captain, potentially, I know with 
the lower decks being covered in engineering. If we detach the saucer, we should be able to potentially see if there's anything that we can do separately from the ship. And just to keep the upper sections um, Well, move everyone to evacuate. the... Move everyone to the saucer section and then vent the whole... Uh, oh, detach, then vent. Yeah, well, detach and then vent the rest of the ship to... That's what I was thinking too, because then they won't look have a lot, lot less damage. Don't think they're gonna need a good cleaning. Uh, um, let's do it. Let's move priority. Move everyone to the saucer section. Oh, you are glitch. You're glitch. Full on robotic. Okay. Yeah, I was hearing that too. Um. Testing, testing. All right. Uh, sorry, you were saying something about evacuations. Yes. Move everyone to the saucer section, separate, and vent the hall. Okay. Uh, could you please give me a presence plus command test? Uh, oh, basically, however many successes you get me, will indicate how successful or how fast the uh, operation takes. So no, no way to get momentum from this, but, you know. Speaking of momentum, let's take one. Do we have any? You have three. Okay. I will take one just to try to get more. Okay. And I'm going to use lead by example. That's a good one. Yes. Ooh. Everybody get off the ship. Everyone get to the bridge. I am already here. Follow my lead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa. Four successes. Nice. Everyone listens to me. <laughs> yeah. oh. You seem to have built up enough trust within the crew that, well, if the captain is speaking this, then this is probably a good idea. And they do so. Uh, within uh, five minutes, everyone reports... Or, nah. Within uh, five minutes, uh, Lieutenant Lagos reports, uh, Sir, all uh, personnel have been relocated to the saucer sections. Emergency shelters have been erected in cargo bays one through three. And the shuttle bay has been... Uh, uh, and the shuttle bay has been uh, re re da, da, da. and the shuttle bay has been uh, sealed off and set up as an emergency uh, aid station if needed. Excellent. All right. Who's gonna take the <laughs> Who's gonna take the other half? Uh. Yeah, well, technically, I guess that would be my job. So, are you actually uh. going down there? Can we control the other half without putting somebody down there on the secondary bridge? I mean, if you're just going to do basic commands with it, yes. But if you okay. want it to, you know, fly as and do as well as the saucer section, then no. Yeah, I just want to. No. I want to just open it up to space. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah, then the ship will separate, and we will cut to. Where? Uh, I have the ship tokens here somewhere. Ships. Where? Space. Is the saucer section. The, pure, the beautiful emptiness of space. Where the, where the saucer section. So this is going to, of course, need a task first to make sure it, you know, actually goes as needed. Oh as boy. I believe that this is a. Uh, well, I've written it down. Let's double check what it does. Um, Saucer Steps is a control <coughs> con task with a difficulty three, assisted by ship structure engineering. There we go. Uh, that will do, be what's needed. Um, okay. I'm going to add a point of threat to increase the compli. Uh, no, I'm going to spend a couple points of threat to include the complication that since engineering is not running as it should you the ship cannot assist in this task so oh, you bastard this okay. is just up to uh just up to primrose here control plus con difficulty three hmm firm but fair <laughs> is th question is there a collision risk involved right now <laughs> no in fact what you're trying to do is avoid a uh, yeah. yeah no you there's empty space out there so no as far as we know Mm hmm. Let's see. 
All right, so um, I shall take a momentum for a third die. Okay. And I have a focus, so I think I'm okay. Let's see what we do. <laughs> yeah, you got this. Um, oh, nice. Uh, even, yeah, so that's one momentum right back. So even with the ship, you know, fighting you at every step of the way, Primrose, man, you're good. You've, you've got this. And the ship slowly begins to separate. And the, as you, uh, gain distance on the uh, star drive section. It seems that we have been successful, Captain. And Primrose will sort of like crack their knuckles, but it probably doesn't sound like that. It just sounds like celery snapping. <laughs> <laughs> broken leaves or broken yeah. twigs. Like, yeah, <laughs> twig snapping. <laughs> Ooh. Uh. Well, if we were in a horror movie, we'd be screwed. Good thing we're not. Yeah. That we know of. Mm -hmm. That we know of. No, stop. I don't need this to be a Blair Witch project, please. There's a, well, no, there's actually a shark in the water, too, and in in engineering. Dude. Sharknado. Uh, on the plus side, the cetacean operations are having a hell of a time. Uh, you have cetacean operation? I never made it canon, so probably not. If, the, if there was a cetacean operations, this would be the best time for them. I'd have you all make it like whale and dolphin characters and we'd go to town, but sadly, yes. uh, maybe next time, maybe next uh, STA game. Yeah, with um, Mei Loon's cousin, Lou Mei. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so what, what are you guys doing now? Well, pretty much going to, like, basically open up everything uh in the star drive section like on like keep the water coming out as long as we're safe here okay um hopefully we'll get calm back from the nalu and just figure out a way to stop that and get our ship back sure okay uh can you please uh someone pick up zach since our chief engineer isn't around uh, so if Zach could please roll me a control plus engineering and the ship can assist with communications plus engineering. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. Flight control system, emergency repairs, power systems. Any of those sound good? Um, let's do power systems. Right, venting. Not venting. Oh. Not, not, not at all. Okay. Venting. This is going to be fun. Oh, Jesus. So, uh, congratulations. You open up the. So you succeed. The. All of the uh, airlocks open up, and you are dazzled by, you know, a billion multi, uh, multifaceted crystals, catching the uh, star. Catching the uh, starlight and dazzling it in the biggest disco ball you've ever seen. Well, maybe that one time back on the Nighthawk with uh, uh, the Shran's, you know, disco party from hell. But that's, you know, something <laughs> different entirely. Um, but, um, and then uh, Lieutenant Lagos, uh, is re well, actually, uh, both Moore and Zach on your consoles, well, you're reporting a complete loss of atmosphere uh there's a problem however a big one not all of the uh water escaped and those that did did not escape froze and is now acting as a dam oh gee. uh your ship's going to need a significant refit um oh and by the way uh they also um as you are busy looking at the sensors on the ship, um, these. What is going on here? Why is my thing not working here? 
you. Uh, three now lose ships. Um, I wouldn't call it decloaking, um, but rather they slide out of hidden space in here. Uh, Lagos is reporting their weapons are armed. And two, oh. two of them <laughs> are... Eh, I've lost control. There we go. Uh, two of them move to the star drive section. One of them makes is beginning to or inserts itself between you and the star drive section. Hail them. Channel open. Captain, if I may, may I speak for them to them? Uh. Now lose ships. This is Commander Hadrix of the Federation Starship Concordia. Um apparently our part of our ship has hit um, a rift and has been flooding water and we've been told that it potentially is due to a Nalu construct and we are needing assistance please we are of no threat could you please assist USS Concordia my name is Am Amistress Chalet of the Nalu Protectorate Forces, you may not be aware of that you have that you had crossed into our space, and you have, well, the thing you what you have run aground is because we had placed it there. So, under normal circumstances, we would say turn your ship around and go home, but that seems to be quite impossible at this moment. And she sort of snickers. Uh, you. You don't need a uh, check to realize that she is taking a bit of um, sardonic glee at your misfortune. Mistress, um, yes, I. we were heading towards um, the SRM system to actually um, come to be able to view the um, Tika Fasi. I'd heard about it before when I'd worked with your people, and... Our ship is part of a exploratory mission for the Federation into the Lesai Expanse. And that's why we were heading out this way. Yes. Well, while the Fathom S seems to regard your kind with a bit of a sickening uh, eagerness, I must say that I do not share her views. And as my orders were to protect this section of space from any trespassers... I have deemed you to be a trespasser. So, you seem to have, uh, you do seem to have uh, propulsion capabilities on that half ship. I'd suggest that you take it and leave. As of this moment, we are claiming your discarded property is salvage. Mistress, that is Federation property, and we cannot abide by the salvage rights of another sovereign nation on our property. I do implore you to help us with the repairs and um, help our ship so that we can take it out of our system, unless you want me to contact the home world on our behalf about this matter. You gave up your pro you gave up claim to this the second you discarded it into our space now granted you have left it in how shall we say worse for wear even if it wasn't so frozen over it would take us some time to get it back to functionality but and she sh she makes a uh, open hand gesture that you have come to realize is their way of a sh communicating a shrug I believe that the your uh, bipedal me no it was the Ferengi we had a good lesson from finders keepers you discarded it we have claimed it this is ours now hey I've I've got a real quick question McCall yes as do um I. would <laughs> Gunther probably has more knowledge about the uh, Nalu than 
maybe most of the people on the ship, just considering he's yeah. part of the Lasai Expanse. Yeah. How, how do the Nalu feel about trial by combat? Mm, typically, they they find it a bit of waste of their time. Uh, they're, they are a incredibly xenophobic species. Uh, they're used to being the ones in charge. And will pretty much do what they need to to win. Uh, they don't do so much with this whole honor thing. Mm. Uh, sorry, what was your question, Scotty? Is the star drive, like, is there any power in the star drive that we could get it moving? Because, yeah, they're seeing it as we're discarding something that, of uh, you know, importance, yeah. but they're kind of seeing it as dead in the water. Is there any possibility we could get it moving? To um, show that you we can, still have control of it? You can certainly try. Uh, that complication um, has buggered a lot of things up down there. Uh, that is going to be a control engineering difficulty of four. And the ship will not be able to assist with this. Okay. I'm going to do it. So I can help. Reading between the lines, um, Moore's doing this on his own and probably totally understanding getting reprimanded. But yeah. Um, Considering I have reverse engineering as a, as a focus, so mm -hmm. um, I'm completely reverse engineering this sucker. Um, okay. Because you know, <laughs> there there's no rule book for this. No, um, there isn't. I'm going to pop my determination now for I've got this. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. Because much better, you know, have to. Yeah. Um, so for two automatic successes, um, my engineering scores a three. Uh, I'm going to use those two momentum to get a third extra die. Okay. So, you said control engineering? Yep. That's, That's four successes. Yeah, that is four successes. Okay. Um, you might not be able to get it to dance the tango, but you can certainly point it in a direction and tell it where to go and how fast. Um... We're gonna start. I'm gonna have like start piloting it and having it just start like going off. Okay. Just to... deep space thirteen. Yeah, fifteen. <laughs> mean fifteen. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna like start send like start sending it this way. All right. Uh, those of you on the bridge who are, you know, paying this any heed, and that's probably most of you. Uh notice that she, um, the emistress looks up uh, obvious uh, there's a muffled whistling in the background as she's being communicated to uh, her eyes go wide with a bit of surprise and then she gets her uh, steely gaze back in her so you think you can outsmart us on our own turf Dry, Drylander? Mr. Shirley, you can obviously see that our ship is not abandoned and it is not salvage. Now, if you do not cease and desist and not help us out with this matter with our ship, I will be forced to do... We may be forced to have serious cultural reparations to deal with with your culture and i do know your culture if you need to look into your database on the events of the hamsi armistice and then look up my name hadrix you might find a few things and in that case i'm popping my i'm popping my talent of friend of the nalu ah. oh trait sorry not ah, talent trait, trait. ah Okay, so you're doing that for your, um, for an advantage. Cool. Uh, so that advantage will give you an ec one. I will give you uh, one. Ah. So normally this would have been an opposed roll. Um, instead, this is going to just be against a static difficulty, which is going to be difficulty three. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that that's my trait. That's actually not a talent that I'm using. Yep. I actually have a trait that states that. 
Yeah. So then, um, what am I going to roll for? Uh, this is going to be a presence plus command. Uh. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm going to go presence com use presence command. I'm going to pop my determination for always look for the third path. Okay. Use my focus of Nalu relations. Yeah. All right, and and with wow. the, and the popping two with the determination mm -hmm. that should put me at four. It does indeed. So you get a you get one uh, momentum back. Very well. She cuts the screen, and uh, she does her you know her research thing as she pulls her senior staff into a conference room for a long drawn out discussion on uh, you know philosophy and the you know all that sort of stuff all the time well the uss concordia has stopped uh spitting out uh crystals and is continuing to flood with water captain but. i hope that i did not just make it worse but i think i made it better let's find out <laughs> let's uh, i mean please don't, please don't reprimand me later Five, uh, about five minutes later, uh, the average time for a standard uh, um, mission, a standard um, Brief. uh, briefing room <laughs> scene. Yep. Ah, uh, Chalet decides, or re, or a mistress Chalet uh, opens communications again. Commander Hadrix, as I have discussed this with, in my crew, and we are aware of your presence and assistance during the initial stages of our two species uh, relationships. So what I am going to do is I am going to escort you both or both parts of your ship out of Nalu space with the warning that you please do not enter our space again. I think we can be be in an arrangement with that. And as for the damage occurring to our star drive section with the water pouring into it, well, I didn't say I'd help with that. You are Starfleet, after all. You should be smart enough to figure this out. She sort of lets out a mirthful laugh as she uh, that you don't need an auto translator to uh, just to figure out. As uh, mm. two of her ships uh, tractor beam the USS Concordia Star Drive, assuming, of course, um, the Moor has decided to, you know, stop telling it to go in a single direction. Uh, if they're going to direct it back to us, then I would. I'm still going to have my hand on it, but I'm not going to, like, fight it. Uh, Primrose, you can see their coordinates are leading back towards the gulf of space between the Nalu and the Medal, which is neutral territory. Alrighty. Yep. So they we'll start on. leading the saucer in that direction. Okay. And those guys begin to up i need a bigger space uh backdrop apparently okay so you have a uh sort of not really fixed the problem but at least the nalu acknowledge your existence and are not making it much worse that's helpful <laughs> step which, in the right direction which is really all that can be expected of them Well, Captain, it looks like we're kind of out of the deep end per, per se, but we're going to still have to do something about that other deep other end. Start. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. on that pun, deck 24 begins flooding. <laughs> you will not be able <laughs> that was, to use that, that was not meant to be a pun, but it kind of is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah but... we're going to have to keep our head above water. Well, no. we, stepped... <laughs> we stepped out of the puddle and into the pool. Oh, good. There went deck 16 and 17. 
yeah, there's nowhere else for the water to go down, so it's now flooding up. Uh, as long as they don't flood the bar. Oh, no, the bar's safe. The bar's on the uh, saucer section. So, oh, fortunately, God, oh, so let's, <laughs> no, uh, let's, let's all take a break and go to the bar. No, <laughs> no, 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 that's totally out of character. I mean, sometimes the best ideas come when you're all half sloshed. Hey, yeah. I was completely sober for all this, so... <laughs> uh, Unfortunately, so was I. <laughs> Morse just over at his console, like sweating bullets for taking control of the star drive without permission. Okay, well, can we call Duke? Can we find out who piloted the star drive section? I mean, it's easy enough to see. Yeah, uh, Zach, you see it from engineering console. Uh, quick tap of your science arm, took over. Yeah. yeah, of your armrest console there, uh, Hadrix, and yeah, easy enough. Also, I'm pretty sure Moore doesn't have a good poker face. No. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, Ensign Moore, that was probably helpful in the moving the star drive section for me to be able to keep pleading our case. Let's try not to do that again, though. Uh, not exactly something I want to make a habit of. But a distraction was needed. Actually, good job, you, kid. Y yep, very good. I agree. So, Captain, I I'm out of ideas right now. So we're gonna have to figure out something to do to get our star drive fixed. We need Otherwise, a plug in subspace. Be... As more says out loud. What? Well, it's from what a subspace. It's from a subspace tear. We need to somehow fix the tear. Plug the hole, so to say. Uh, Lagos perks up. You know, one of my favorite activities when I was able, which wasn't often growing up out there, was snorkeling and scuba diving. Alrighty. Not exactly something I thought was going to be your forte, Lagos. Granted, getting these guns into a neoprene wetsuit is difficult. <laughs> but Oh, the images that just went through my head oh. out of character. <laughs> <laughs> I just want... There, there's, your, there's your programmable metal. metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> What's everyone? Why do I play with you people? <laughs> he looks around. What is Can everyone we... laughing at? It's very difficult to carry a Type 2 phaser inside a wetsuit. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I... Can we just have a scene of that with his big thighs as he's putting on a wetsuit? <laughs> we got him plugging a hole in subspace. Okay, let's figure this out. Oh. Uh... All right. Send me over. I'm going in. <laughs> okay. Uh, so as we are going to jump into the deep dive portion of the episode, uh, a little sooner than anticipated, we are going to take a bit of an early break. Uh, so let's be back at half past the hour. Oh, and 20 minutes. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, about 20 minutes. I am needing to get a couple things ready, and I have a... Realize I need to get something else done during the break. So, a little longer than normal, but, you know, this is probably going to be a bit of a shorter episode than normal. So, we got this. See you guys in 20. And we are back. So, uh, sounds like a pseudo underwater mission is going to be the next act. So you lose a momentum. And uh, who are you guys taking with you? Um, this is going because you need an engineer. Yeah. Keep in mind, you actually have a Nalu engineer. 
who is, you know, perfectly capable of being underwater without, you know, any problem. Yes. Um, more will go because I feel like having a scientist that can fix the tears is a good idea. Yep. And keep in mind, we have all sorts of other science characters that haven't hmm. seen much. Perhaps Boimler or Alarak. Or um, I Tristan. think I. Um, in case something else comes to that Terran subspace that isn't uh just water, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm gonna take Gunther because he has combat medicine in case things go wrong. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? Okay, actually, I'll take Alarak. Sure. Okay. Alarak. Which we have here. And where is Gunther? He's under security. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Okay. I'm trying to, I need to figure out an activation for him, so I'll yes, figure that out. Okay, so you are all standing in the transporter room, all gussied up in your uh, Star, Starfleet issue diving gear. <clears throat> uh, because it is. Well, because uh, Ensign Moore at least kept the power running, the water over there is it's not terribly cold. Probably only about, I'd say, maybe approximately 50, 60 degrees. Uh, granted, there are ice walls at the end that continue to, uh, at the edge of, you know, water and um, vacuum. But other than that, should be fine. Just don't go anywhere near the extremities of the ship and you should be fine, right? Sure. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so if someone wants to take up um, uh, Mr. Teagan for the transporter operation, uh, this will be a control engineering. And the ship can assist with sensors engineering. And because you're beaming to a, uh, a difficult environment, this is going to be difficulty three. Oh, I'll grab Tegan. Uh, what was the role on that again? Uh, control engineering, please. Uh, transporters, replicators for um, focus? Yep. And who's got the ship? Sure. Okay. Well, we got two from Tegan. Woo! Well, maybe the ship sheet is not willing to load for me. Oh, roll twenty, that please don't break a... on us. Uh, yeah, and a fickle mistress. Uh, I'm just getting a white thing, right? White screen. Uh, let's see. Here. Although the saucer sections popped up just fine. Yeah, because you need the saucer section because we're trying to get to the other half. Right. Uh, so, would you say sensors engineering? Sensors engineering, please. Apparently, my roll twenty is not on. There we go. Okay, that's the three uh, degrees of success you need. There's the, uh, you know, the standard uh, beaming out, beaming in, beaming out sensation that tickles your molecules and it plants you. Um, <laughs> uh, I could have sworn that I had a hallway set. I guess I didn't copy that. Oh, there it is. I called it a corridor. Beams you in a corridor that hasn't been used in a while apparently guessing this is in like the weapons drive section yeah. that hasn't been flooded yet no not yet but you definitely hear the uh so you beam up to deck 15 it is the um deck that currently doesn't have any water on it um but uh despite the fact that environmental sense systems aren't functioning there's still a bit of atmosphere to work um, to breathe and enough air that you can hear the ship creaking and groaning and beginning to pop at the seams as several uh, joints that you know uh, that passed every Starfleet uh, engineering certification to exam seems to fail when it's under 200 ps or over 2,000 psi of water. I don't actually know if that's a lot amount or not, but it sounds like it is, so I'm going with that. No, I think that's we're, just my bones. We're <laughs> one, we're one pun away from this corridor flooding. Yes, so you know, try me. 
<laughs> Challenge accepted? <laughs> I mean, no. No, no. Uh, I, I, they're coming to my mind, and I'm going to try not to say them, but I promise nothing. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Moore's going to speak up. We need to figure out how to seal those subspace r- space rifts before we're going to be able to do anything about the water. That sounds pretty straightforward. I think that's the best way. That best thing we're going to be able to have to do. Got any ideas besides that? Well, we know uh, the rift is in engineering. True. Um, we need to. I mean, it, it's going to be playing around with what's going to seal it. Is it going to be a tetric on false? Is it going to be, you know, uh, there's a multitude of different things that could do do it. We just got to figure out how to use it or how to do it. This is not the way I expected to be spending my time around Nalu technology. I mean, not only technology, you, you need to learn how to work with water. Uh, thanks for that note, Captain Obvious. He's got a point. <laughs> Can we get moving here? Are you eager to swim with the fishes? I'm eager to punch some. Careful, laddie. You might wake up with a horse head in your bed. Oh, God. Why does that yeah. sound like you're speaking from experience, Zax? Eh, I've had worse yeah. happen. You met my third wife then, have you? <laughs> boy. Oh, boy. She put some hair on your face, little laddie. <laughs> All right, let's get moving. And it doesn't take much more than a blaze to take the hair off yours. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, the shade is being thrown. <laughs> okay. All right, to engineering, and you can get your pretty little scans of this hole in space. Okay. Uh, so how are you going to be getting to engineering? Are you going to just enter, you know, dive down through a turbo lift shaft? Are you going to g- keep as dry as possible? We- I was assuming, yeah, we could find an... Uh, easy because if we open the doors to engineering it's only going to flood more well, but if well, we take us a... that's no? pretty much all underwater now the water can only go up ah okay i was thinking of taking I the do... jeffrey's tube down there we're only one jeffrey's level tube. we're only one deck above the water like yeah. if we stop talking we'd probably hear it underneath our feet yeah good luck with that so i mean if we emergency open the turbo lift we probably look down and it's just water like, all right, who's di- cannonballing first? That'd be me. Let's go. I open up the turbo shaft. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I can ask each of you to please roll me a uh, control plus con with a difficulty of two, please. And this would be uh, skills such as uh, swimming, underwater diving, um, zero G operations, that sort of thing. Nope. Nothing here. Okay. Nope. Nope. And Gunther. Yep. On it. We all fall flat in our face. Oh, no, Gunther makes it. (laughs) (laughs) So. Eat um... my dust, nerds. I don't know if any of you guys have actually do- done any underwater or cave diving. I've Can't done it. Can't swim, so no. Yeah. Uh, it is extremely disorienting to um, wreck dive um, because it's literally all black. Now, thankfully, there's enough power running through here that you get some emergency uh, uh, phosphorus-style lighting to, keep, to light your way, but it is still disorienting as hell. Uh, Gunther... Uh, thanks to all your, let's say, uh, unique experiences, are mm, mm, ah, you you adapt to this much easier than the others. Uh, so you take the lead, whether they like it or not. 
Man, uh, I'm the lowest ranking person in this in this little group. Bye. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. Tension, yeah, Gun, yeah, Gunther, yeah, 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 because he's a crewman, man. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about Starfleet is recognizing experience and learning where to recognizing and respecting experience. Also, you know, mm -hmm. let the crewman go first. <laughs> so you make your way through the twisting or you make your way down the twisting Jeffrey the twisting Jeffrey's tubes and the turbo lift shafts to deck 18 where engineering is and then it's yeah, fairly a, uh, it's a very difficult run and I'd like each of you to please make me a fitness plus uh, let's say fitness plus Either fitness plus security or fitness plus medicine, whichever test is higher or whichever test okay. is better. Uh, this is basically an endurance test to see how well you guys do against the uh, r oncoming rushing and the rushing of water. And this is a difficulty of two again. Uh, nothing from yeah, Alarak. For me. Okay. Alarak gets blown back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh... Yeah, just do that and see what happens. Oh, God. Eat my dust, nerds! <laughs> <laughs> Why? Gunther... Well, we get a momentum off Gunther. Yeah, Gunther, you get the momentum. Uh, so, uh, both Gunther and Zach, you make it and are able to maneuver with very little problem. Uh, the problem is, Alarak and Moore, you are not prepared for the amount of exertion that this is... Um, causing on your bodies uh, so I am going to spend two complication or two points of threat to add the complication trait to your characters for the remainder of your time down here which is uh, physical exhaustion lovely gotcha yep so does Alarak still have his threat gun yeah because they're popping <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and let me get to, and you make your way up to engineering. Uh, now, the good news about this is that the isolation uh, protocols are still engaged. Uh, the warp core is, uh, or the room to engineering is clamped down tightly. There is all the doors and ladders, uh, ladder shafts have been sealed off. The problem is that every other, um, you know, weld has bro has broken. Um, several rivets have, or several self-sealing stem bolts have become unsealed, and are and the water is rushing through all those. So you don't really have a means to enter engineering. How do you wish to? At least, hmm. you know, not through the normal doors, unless you want to, you know, figure a way through that. Could, could we find? I know water resistance is very much a thing, but could we uh, find, like, a Jeffrey's tube that goes, like, above engineering and basically just try and, Drop you it. know, like, kick part of it away or shoot part of it away so we can get in that way? Yeah, sure. Uh, I was going to say Jeffrey's tube, too. Yeah, if someone wants to roll me a reason plus engineering test, only a difficulty of one. To find a good way in. I will this leave looks that like up my kind that. of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, reason isn't exactly on my vocabulary, but the my engineering reason... part is. I was gonna say my reason engineering is a fourteen. Well, your reason engineering was reasoned enough, so <laughs> you get uh, one point of momentum. Okay. Uh, so Zach. Uh, because you are a Tellarite, your um, thinking is tackle the problem head on. By your reasoning, wherever the water is rushing out the strongest is probably the best way in. And you find it at the base of the warp core. Uh, so uh, deck 19 is where the water seems to have basically pushed the floor out from under the warp core. And it's gushing quite heavily. So naturally, that's your way up. Okay. 
And get your little scanning device out, kiddo. Ah. You enter engineering. Uh, unlike the rest of the sh way in, engineering is almost completely dark. Uh, part of the warp core isolation or the warp core protection thing is literally shunting all energy away from the warp core because that'll delay the delay it as you know an extra two or three seconds, which could be the difference between life and death. Uh, so there are you know blinking an occasional blinking emergency light. And the lot of you see several blinking lights up and down the warp core, culminating near the ceiling. Uh, the only problem is they're moving. Oh, as, good! As something has I'm... wrapped itself around the top of the warp core. Oh, good! I'm real glad I brought a security officer. Oh, god! <laughs> okay, these are the Kelpian. This Kelpian has gotten rid of his threat ganglia, right? I'm not entirely sure if that if they've had enough activations to do that yet. Oh damn! Uh, I mean, they had an activation because of what you said earlier. But... Yeah, yeah. So Alarak could have that activation where you know uh, she doesn't have that anymore. I was just figuring if she would have felt the threat beforehand. Mm. Oh yeah. That's where I was getting at on that one. Uh, um, Paranoid but, in but general. Since, but since Kelpians really aren't total canonical, hey, it's all good. Eh, I would think that the threat that these that she's thinking is pretty much, you know, we're under we're under several tons of water pressure at the moment. We could die any minute. You know, ah, uh, that works too. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so. That's where we're at. Uh, there is also a large energy rift that I don't have a good token for, but it's sort of at the base of the warp core. Um, it is approximately three feet in diameter. It is glowing with a uh, bluish color, with a, a neon blue color. And even though you really can't you know, see water rushing out of it because, well, water is everywhere, it is definitely pulsating. Uh, with a bit of a with a regular thing, yeah, that, yeah, there's a snarl. That's it. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, uh, that's my artistic style. I uh, I have one quick question for you, McCall. Y yes. Can can I give you a momentum to say uh, retroactively that Gunther brought a Type Three with him? Sure. <laughs> I right, mean, we're also sweet. in engineering. There's probably a Type Three under a console somewhere. Yeah. Like we're still on it, the ship. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to spend what I think might be my last two points of threat uh, to give the creature an extra turn in initiative. Good. Yeah. Uh, we are going to be in initiative. So what you can do is you can, you know, spend actions to attack the creature, or you can spend actions to attack the problem. Or both, you know, however you guys wish to do this. But we're in combat now. And go. Go. <laughs> Alarak would totally be going for the problem. Yeah, uh, not, Moore's not thinking the problem you. too. Um. So, um, Alarak, shall we scan the rift to see if we can f uh, pinpoint what we need to do to seal it? Sounds like a plan to me. Okay. Uh, so, if whichever one of you guys wants to go first. Um, is it control science? Um, let's science? roll insight science for the first one. Okay, insight science. Uh, this uh, is going to be a difficulty of two, since you're literally right on top of it now. Sensors operations focus? I'd let that work. Yay. I'd feel happier if you had particle physics or ast astronomical phenomenon, but... I, I have astrometrics and physics. Yeah, those... <laughs> Eh, actually, kind astrometrics of... might work well for this too. So, yeah, you have a focus. One of them. I'd say you're technically the senior officer, even though you're below. I, you know, you, you can uh, I'm rolling. I'm rolling for a fourteen. What are you rolling? Oh, actually, I think Alarak rolls a fifteen on that. Hold on. Mm. Insight science. Yeah, fifteen. 
All right, Alarak, you take the lead. I will assist. And do you have a focus? Probably. No, no focus. But there's okay. at least one success. One success. Problem is, it was a two success task. Oh. Uh, but, uh. but then I still have my. There we go. Uh. I haven't hit. I was gonna say I hadn't hit. Yet. Oh no, I'm sorry. Um, you're you're an initiative. That means only one person can act at a time. That means no one can assist. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, hey. I did not. I'm sorry, I did not specify that. Uh, so Alarak, I'm afraid that that's not, you know, taking. You're you're panicked and are trying your best to ignore your fear sense, but it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And you really can't focus all that much. No, it works for me. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, creature is going to uh, let out or spend its action. Let's see. If it does this. Oh, that's a crit. So, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I would like everyone to please roll me a uh, fitness... Uh, let's see. No. Hang on. How do I want to do this? I should have written the rules up. I didn't. Um, roll me a, uh, control plus, yeah, roll me either a control plus security or a control okay. plus con, uh, as it releases a deafening sound wave that reverberates through the water. Interesting. And this is a difficulty of two to pass. So far, two Ooh. of you have done it. Three of you have done it. Oh, boy. Let's go, Gunther. And Gunther gets Gunther. momentum. Gunther, Gunther Let's gets go. momentum. Drat. So none of you are disoriented, um, which is annoying, but that's life. So that's its turn. Who wants to go next? Gunther would. Because okay. now he's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gunther, you're pissed. What do you do? Um, I would like to use my minor action to... I believe you can charge phasers to give them piercing, correct? I believe you can, yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, charge my Type 3 to mm -hmm. give it piercing. Yeah. And then I'm going to shoot at it. Okay. Don't hit the warp. Uh, control plus security, please. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, but just in case, uh, momentum for a third die. Okay. And I do have a focus. There's your three success. There's your two successes plus one from... You get it back. Yay, get the momentum right back. Okay. And uh, then, remind me what the base damage for type three is. It's a four challenge dice plus your security. So see, eight. So eight. Piercing two. Uh, let's use momentum to reroll those four zeros. Okay. Uh, so far, we're looking at piercing six. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so six damage with piercing six, which yeah. is which sure beats its um, natural resistances. Um, it sounds like it opens its mouth, and it sounds like a you know that squealing sound when you let um air out of a balloon and you go yes <laughs> imagine, about, imagine about a hundred of those just all in unison as it screams <laughs> no. in pain <laughs> no all i can imagine is that video of the guy who went into a store where there's a bunch of those rubber chickens oh yep that oh, works too. Rushes down <laughs> yeah yeah that works too okay and i just cut uh, gunther will just sort of yell the thing like yeah that's right you big motherfucker come get me Interesting that only people that can hear you are those that are actually on comms with you, but you know that helps. Okay. Eh, he feels good about it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if if it works, it works. Okay. Well, that's your turn, Gunther, and now it's it's turn again. No, nope, I'm editing Gunther's. There we go. As the creature, um, moving far faster than anyone then something of its sinuous size should be, uh, snaps out a Gunther like the uh, s serpentine whip. Uh, so this is going to be an opposed daring uh, strength oh, test. Go. Or daring 
daring security. Um. All right. I'll I'll let you roll first because I need to yep. see how many I need to beat here. Okay. Now, and because it has, um, it has the attribute of extraordinary daring. That basically means it gets one free success. Good. And I don't. You guys haven't given me much in the way of threat, so I don't have any left. So. Haha. <laughs> uh. So you need two successes. All right. Um. I'll take a momentum for a third die. Mm-hmm. And I do have hand-to-hand -hand combat as a focus, so that's yep. fun. Uh, that's not enough, I'm afraid. Damn. Okay. Uh, so it's going to grab you. Good. And you are going to take... Ow, oh. ow, 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 Um, so... Of course it takes out the combat medic. Uh, Gunther takes uh, seven points it's... of damage. Are, of... are the Hydra suits for wearing, like, exosuits where we have a resistance of one? Yeah, you would have <laughs> resistance one, so that brings it down okay. to six, I believe. Um, man, he don't have determination. Um... Did you activate him from the arc? Yeah, but that just with that I just gave him a talent and I gave him another talent for his activation for this session. Oh, okay. Um, I was gonna ask. Could I could I give you two threat to avoid the injury? Sure, I'll take that threat. Good. Uh, yeah. So uh, Gunther is uh, horrendously injured, but uh, uh, the creature seems to be quite pleased with itself, though. Uh, oh, here, here's a good question: yeah. Is the water that's pouring into this room is it salt or fresh water uh saline oh oh that's gonna burn oh yeah, yeah. salt yeah. in the wound i mean i'm more worried about the teeth in the wound at the moment but you know one thing at a time anyways uh zach and moore you guys are left uh i can go but do you want to do you, what? What would you like me to do? Fix the try to fix the rushing in water, or fix the butt giant bitey thingy? Okay, You're the... much higher ranked than I am. It's your call. But I'm going to eject the warp core with the creature on it and detonate the fucker. Oh dear. <laughs> oh okay. Oh. Okay. Um, I can feel this thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, the... <laughs> Uh, then, okay, I will try to, uh, oh, you know what? That might solve the other problem, too. I'll attack the creature. <laughs> See, that's what I was thinking. It might close, <laughs> it might close the subspace terror by detonating the warp core, and well, I'll kill the thing with the it, it just totally occurred to me that the subspace terror might be attached to the warp core because the warp core is such a creation. Ooh, um, actually, instead of attacking it, is there any power to the console in, that Zax is in front of? Um, yes, but, uh, but any attempts to use it will, um, basically you're in, the advantage of being in chief engineering or being in engineering is lost. So yes, but the ship doesn't get, to, it does it. yeah, I just want to turn off the warp core. Okay. Cause if it's power supply is the power is supplying the, um, rift, then in theory, that would actually take care of a lot of problems. Okay. Uh, this is a pretty mundane task, so um, I'll call this a difficulty one test of control plus engineering. Control engineering. Uh, computer spoken? Eh, I don't <coughs> know. No, not, not in this instance. Okay. Yeah. I, I could make an argument for reverse engineering, but it, it's pointless because it's very mundane. Yeah. Well, ah, I don't need it. <laughs> there's, your, there's your two successes, so uh, you get one momentum. Okay, so the warp Hi. core, the warp core shuts off. The portal sadly is still there, and I'm hearing a bit of echo through your uh, headset there, uh, Scotty. I have no idea why it's doing that. Hold on. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, sorry, uh, the warp core powers off, but the portal is still there, and the creature is also still there. Uh, 
Okay. I am going to reverse the matter antimatter injectors and inject uh, um, matter into the antimatter and detonating it and exact and releasing the uh, warp core. Okay. This is going to be a difficulty two test. Uh, daring okay. plus engineering. Uh, power systems, warp drive, any of those would count as focuses. I got power systems. Does Zach have determination? He does. Because uh, I have... Uh, yeah, I do. I haven't done any of my activations for him. I got <laughs> talents. I got talents in the nick of time. What's What's uh, that one do? Uh, it's basically it gives you like vicious one on extended task oh. basically oh that's right yeah i got cherry rigging i will give him the ter termination though for my because i haven't done anything with him so let's see <laughs> <laughs> values give her the old one two <laughs> Oh, <laughs> all right. <coughs> By giving her the. All right. Sounds like. All right. So let's go back to. We'll burn the determination for two successes, and we will do daring. Engineering. Do we have any? You have one have momentum, one? which isn't enough for a third dice. You need us. You would need okay. two. Okay. No problem. We'll do that. Focus. Power systems. All right. Let's blow this fucker into space. Well, okay. So that's a grand total of five successes. Uh, so you get three momentum. So you're up to four. Um, so there is the sound of a... Uh, somewhere down below, because, you know, everything is now connected by water. You feel um, a, lo a shunk as several emergency doors open and the um, sound of water rushing out as if a drain's being pulled. Uh, there's an automated voice emanating from engineering. Warp core ejection in three, two, one. And I need all of you to please roll me a daring plus con <coughs> test, good. please. Um, this is going to be a difficulty of one. With the exception of Gunther, this is going to be a difficulty of three for you. Because hey, hey, you... hey screw you, buddy. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're not only are you fighting the uh, pull of water, you're fighting the pull of the dra of the uh, serpent who's currently got you in his jaws. Um. Okay. Um. I don't care what y'all say. I am taking three momentum for two extra dice because <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say no to that. Yeah. Hey, hey, nah, nah, bud. I'm yeah. getting out of here alive. <laughs> Nor would I, and Zach's just got us two momentum, so we were up to yeah. six. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> could I make an argument for hand to hand combat because I'm probably having to kick and punch my way away from this thing? I will allow that, yes. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Well, wow. you're going. All right. You're going. Uh, so who hasn't rolled? Nope. Uh, everyone's gone, eh? Uh, so, uh, Alarak, you managed to hold... Actually, all of you managed to hold on. Um, except, well, Gunther, you grab a handrail, but the creature doesn't let go and is pulling you down with it. Um, Gunther, no! So Gunther begins to ride the most awesome water slide of his entire life. And I will grant someone some... Um, does anyone have any ideas how to save Gunther? Can uh, I... May, may I attempt to shoot this thing? I, can, <laughs> I, can I try to shoot the snout of the dragon? Uh, it's being flushed down the well, so I think the only one right now with a good shot at it is Gunther. So, Gunther, uh, daring plus security, please. Difficulty of two. Oh. 
Is it a control security for your phasers? Uh, under normal circumstances, yes. However... You know what? Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll take a momentum for a third die. Okay. Yeah, I would not have the time to try and charge this thing, so I'm just shooting. There we know. We we need a phaser skill. Shooting in the wild. You know what? That extra momentum I, saved your freaking arse, man. It did. Uh, roll me some challenge dice. Yes, I shall. Um, let's see. Uh... I'll take a momentum to shave off some resistance. Okay. And uh, just to see if I can get more damaging, because I'm probably going to need it. Uh, the last one to reroll those two zeros. Sure. <laughs> there we go. go. Uh, so, Gunther, um, do you remember the scene in um, Star Trek V where Spock is carrying uh, Bones and the captain up on his rocket boots up the turbo lift and it's going like deck six deck seven deck eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen yeah sure yeah you're seeing that in reverse um when you reach deck 23 you finally ra uh, you finally wrangle your phaser point it and i don't know if you're a religious man but you pray to something as you pull the trigger oh yeah i'm like basically i just shoved the phaser rifle down this thing's throat and hope i can get it to let go of me <laughs> yep uh you fire uh, the creature lets out a, another shriek that sounds like a thousand ducks, lets you go, um, and just as uh, there is that microsecond between where it leaves, where the core leaves the ship, and where you're about to follow it, but you run uh, smack dab into the emergency force field that's erected in place, and you <sighs> get a you probably are uniquely treated to what is probably a very unique sight among most spacefaring vessels that see a coiled sea serpent wrapped around a warp core go boom. Uh, for the rest, I, of, the rest I, of you, see uh, Gunther Voidrunner fall down and not come back up. Uh, do we have uh, comm badges on these uh, yeah, hydro suits? They're, they're built in. I'll tap my com badge. Crewman Void Runner to whoever the fuck hears this. Ow. Ow. Oh. I look down the hole and I was like, oh, Moose ain't gonna like that. <sighs> Better than that. Um, than a, than a, you know, <laughs> dead, <laughs> dead crewman. And. Am I able to attempt the first aid task on myself? Uh, yes. But considering you're underwater in a hydra suit, the increased difficult it will be an increased difficulty of one. I believe that'll be difficulty two now. Okay, and I believe it's daring medicine, if memory yes. serves. Mm-hmm. All right. That didn't go the way I wanted it. And I do have focus, because combat medicine... That's enough. Hey. You at least stabilize yourself. Um, and I will actually spend a, our last momentum to uh, regain five stress. Not five, three. Okay. <sighs> I'm sort of like, you know, even though nobody, <laughs> nobody recommends this in the actual medical field, there's probably like a tooth from this thing stuck in him. Yeah. So he probably... Yanks it out, squirts some like biofoam in there. Keeping this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so we are going to cut to the bridge where the captain, Hadrix, and everyone else, uh, you, you guys are seeing a warp core and a creature fly out of space and explode. Well, that's something you don't see every day. I don't think that's something you see any day. Good point. <clears throat> Boldly going where no man has gone before. <laughs> Can we get and a hold get, of the... <laughs> you get a little blip on your com badge, Captain. Hey, uh, Captain. Crewman that's Floyd true. Runner here. Uh, yeah. I think... 
I think I deserve some kind of promotion. Ow! Because I almost went out the airlock with that thing. <laughs> I look forward to your report. How's the situation with the water? Uh, water's still here, I think. Uh, is the void closed up there, guys? No, it's not. But at least now you don't have the threat of imminent dismemberment hampering your uh, scientific um, investigation. So, the, the water's still wet. Uh, anyways, uh, as a Void Runner limps himself back up to um, the engineering section, uh, Alarak and more, feel free to you know do that analysis again. This Let's time you guys can assist. It's still difficulty two, so insight science. And so let's try this again. Lead the way. Oh, oh well, God. there we go. Ah. Okay, Alarak. So you have... You're not entirely sure why you didn't see this before. It might have had something to do with a, you know, 20-foot-long sea serpent. Um, but this has all the hallmarks of a wormhole. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Um, I think we just need to close this wormhole. That's all. Just close a wormhole. Yeah, well... It, yeah. He, he's just staring up at the aperture, just like, how the... What the... Um, Lieutenant Alarak to Bridge, it appears that the <laughs> liquid coming in is based off... is coming through through a wormhole. I'm sorry, I just saw the I owe you one more core. <laughs> God, yes, I see that now. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Uh. <coughs> I owe you one warp core special sacks. Oh God, oh, okay. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, yeah, so Bridge, you hear that from uh, Lieutenant Alarak. So, how, how do we close a wormhole? Oh. We put a plug in it. All right. How are you going to do that? Yeah. Give me some fun techno babble. You want me to put my finger in it to close the pipe? I mean... If possibility, um, we could try to flood it with a particle that would disrupt it. Every wormhole is unique, so trying to figure out which one would do anything might take a little bit of time. Yeah, basically something to destabilize the wormhole. That's just what we need to find. Mm -hmm. Well... Uh, under normal circumstances, this, you know, if the sea serpent was still here, that'd be a, you know, extended task. But there's currently no threat uh, or any of that sort. So, tell you what, um, if the two of you are more Alrak, well, pick any two of the three of you. Uh, one of you can lead, the other can assist. And however many successes you uh, beat the challenge by determines how long the ship or how much time, or how much time is saved from the ship being needing a extensive repair? Uh, that, what are we going to roll up on that? Uh, this will be either a science or engineering task, so how however you wish. Uh, insight science or control science, insight engineering, control engineering, something like that. Um, I'm still shooting with my 15 for insight science. Insight Science 14, Insight Engineering 13. I do have Reverse Engineering as a focus. I do have my Determination again, because I have yeah. Untapped Potential and Rolled an Effect. Ah, yes. Ooh. Yeah. 
So I do have a determination that could come into play here. Okay. Um, Might as well. Sure. Take, I'll take the assist roll. Then I will do insight science. I'll lead and um, the value of there's always something new to discover. I'd call this something new. Yay. Yeah, a, a constantly moving wormhole set to a literal location and not just a spatial one. Yeah. Just maybe. <laughs> uh, reverse engineering, physics, astrometrics. Uh, astrometrics would work here. <clears throat> or physics, I guess, could work too. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Ooh. Well, I have two successes from my <laughs> auto crit. You do. You do. So... Um, um, third. Three. Three. Okay. Uh, so between the th between all of you guys uh, taking some time, uh, you managed to or you realize that um, there the line connecting this or the end point of this uh, miniature wormhole appears to be somewhere within uh, Nalu territory. Um, it's not hard to figure things out once you put the two and two together that this trap basically forcibly drains water from an already pressurized ocean planet and tries to flood a tries to flood a hapless starship and you know make it far more disturbing or make it far easier for the nalu to you know keep their borders safe deter people that sort of thing no one ever expects to be their uh, starship to turn into a swimming pool. A swimming tool pool with teeth. Yeah, that was a happy accident. No, it wasn't. I totally lied. That was an awesome accident. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. So you realize that the thing keeping the uh, spatial rift open is fairly similar to that which. Um, uh, was used to enter fluidic space um, from the Voyager era. Uh, a quick um, inverse of a deflector pulse should be sufficient enough to destabilize the wormhole and stop any new water from coming in. After that, getting rid of all the existing water is trivial. Repairing everything will take some time. A lot of it. Well, well with no warp core, it'll take us a while to get to where we need to go to. Yeah. So, uh, are we supposed to go back to Deep Space 15 for a while? I think uh, that's going to be for the best. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like all starships should have, like, an emergency Warp 5 engine built in. <laughs> uh, you can work on that when we're going at Impulse the entire way to <laughs> Deep Space 15. Programmable yeah. matter. Programmable <laughs> matter. <laughs> Uh, I want squishy glass-like controls. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, out of I'm totally saying out of character right now. We have to start saying programmable matter, like they say. Um, oh crap! Um, in the Muppets movie, the newest one, um, maniacal laugh. Ah yes, ah. maniacal laugh, maniacal laugh. <laughs> programmable uh. matter. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, the closing. In one of the closing scenes, uh, we find ourselves back on the bridge. Well, you do. I apparently haven't moved myself there yet. There we go. Uh, Captain, you are projecting a, a four-week trip back to uh, Deep Space 15 at full impulse. Um, they'll see what they can do to get the um, USS Arion out to get you a pull. But they're finally making some progress with the Oshirix. Uh, on the other side of the worm, of the other side of the transwarp gate, they're not entirely sure that they can break it off at this, you know, crucial junction. Uh, when all of a sudden an individual comes to the bridge that is not typically seen on the bridge, Doctor Quiff. Uh, he enters the bridge and, with both of his hands together and his head slightly bowed as if in a submissive pose. Which is rare to see from someone who has acted the way he has. Can I help you? Uh, Captain, I, actually, it's my... I think I might be able to help you, sir. 
if you'll allow me, of course. What is it? Well, you see, I come from... S my um, extended family is well-renowned re well in certain aspects of uh, La Chute society. Medical, of course, being my claim to fame. Uh, but my sister, uh, Machinist Quith, happens to administer one of the, um, well, the fleet yards orbiting our, our home world. And I have it on somewhat good authority that unlike your situation where your federation is kind of resource thin out here, we have some ships to spare. I understand your um, fascination with the Great Library is uh, scuttlebutt. I believe is your term, has made it all the way down to the bar, where I imbibe frequently. I would, with your permission, I would like to propose that uh, that my sister, and of course, on through extent of the Lachunt, uh, take a, well, <clears throat> sorry, I'm not usually at such loss for words. It's not often I um, dealing with these situations. <clears throat> I would like to extend, on behalf of my sister, a formal invitation for your ship and crew to come and visit us at the Lachute. Your starship will be repaired, as well as it can be, of course. We are not Federation, but we can offer you a faster assistance. Okay. Oh, splendid. Yeah, we'll make preparations. We'll be happy to. Ah. It would be a fascinating experience. I'm, like I said, we'd like to know more about your people. Ah, and we would like to learn more about yours. I mean, you, your data banks alone would, we could certainly carve out a sp spot in the great library for you, your uh, data banks. Anyways, I shall go see to the, uh, I shall go see to the logistics, Captain. And with that, he will spin on a heel and head back out. <laughs> and it's around this time he passes Moore, who is still sort of smelling like wet dog. Shit, you don't want to be around Zax. No, there's a reason that he that Moore smells like wet dog. Ensign? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Captain. As you uh, can tell, that he's just drained. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd like to see you in my ready room. Commander I... Hedricks, would you join me? Certainly, sir. Okay, that would be... As he, as he purposely doesn't have a smile on his face for a moment. <laughs> okay, uh, as the three of you leave, uh, you hear Lieutenant Finnell and Lagos basically arguing which one of them has con. Lagos says that he currently has uh, access to the phot phaser and photon torpedoes, therefore he has the con. Arguments cease after that. <laughs> okay. Get that. Primrose, and Lagos have... has the bigger gun. Yeah. Nope. Better, no, better yet, as, as I'm walking in. Primrose, you have the con. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This garden is very confused. <laughs> Edson Moore, have a seat, please. Yes, sir. So, you took over a ship that, without my permission, and you constantly do things like that. You keep coming up with these extravagant ideas. Well, sir, technically it was only half the ship, but I know that I, I understand your logistical idea on that. Sure. Well, number one, what do you think I should do about these incidents? Court martial? Quarantine in his room? Demotion? I mean, put him hmm. down as a cadet? That's a possibility. I reach in my desk drawer and pull out a little box, and I hand it to, <laughs> I hand it to Hendricks. And I was like, 
How about Lieutenant Moore? <laughs> that sounds more like it. And he opens up the box. Adrix opens up the box, and there's a the um, black pip. Moore is visibly confused. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Um, and Sin, or should I say Lieutenant, um, it's called a promotion. And he puts that big old grin on his that relaxing <laughs> smile on its face. You can stand up, sir. You can stand up, sir. Very, <laughs> stand up, sir. Up. I, it, it, more is just like, I, I'm very confused. <laughs> Don't be a kid. I, I appreciate what you have done. We've talked about it for a while now, and I think uh, one of my senior staff should at least be a, a good rank. And the way you put yourself out and the way that you've been handling situations, I think you need to, I think you deserve it. I appreciate More, it, it's, sir. It, it's called thinking outside of the box, being inventive. I mean, it's what the hallmarks of Starfleet have i mean half of us probably wouldn't be around here if not for a little bit of outside the box thinking hi oh, i don't think he's too upset he just changed his nameplate on his character <laughs> I, I'm figuring ah, out which, ah, he's figuring out which way to I, put g, g yeah, yeah right right <laughs> yeah we're obviously he's here. not too so yeah that's <laughs> not oh, too well. subtle there not too subtle uh <laughs> So but I'll get up and come around. Somewhere, and... <laughs> somewhere, Void Runner is screaming. <laughs> I, I I appreciate it, sirs. It wasn't what I was expecting being called in here. <laughs> I'll get up and you... I'll shake your hand. <laughs> what do you expect, kid? A dressing down and <laughs> you know being thrown in the brig? We have to. We're a crew that's getting to really understand one another and the only way that's going to happen is by re un really understanding each other and we work better as a team than as individuals absolutely I would and we're honored that. to have you as part of our team I, I appreciate it I definitely uh, it's been interesting being out here coming from the academia world I bet it has. I mean, I know a lot of people that are smart with the sciences and whatnot, and some of them get kind of freaked out by some of these, you know, the real universe, but it seems like you're being able to hold your own. Well, I'm trying. I still have a lot to learn. Don't we all? If we're not learning <clears throat> every day, what's the point, man? One of the many... One of the sayings that brought me to come out here. And then Hendrix puts his hand out and shakes his hand. Yeah, I'll come around to shake your hand. <laughs> All right, Lieutenant, dismissed. Thank you, sir. I'll walk out. And you make your way back out on the bridge where everyone else is looking at you like they didn't actually expect to see you again. <laughs> like we were gonna space him right with a yeah. transporter. Come on, <laughs> it's the season finale. <laughs> uh, or just takes back to his station. There's kind a, of a yeah. this is usual. I was gonna say as I walk as we walk out of the ready room is like you might want to change your uniform, Lieutenant. <laughs> uh, uh, as you, you know, know. <laughs> I just go do that. <laughs> As you uh, sit down at your console more, there's a quick text message from the tactical console with a uh, uh, new pip. Looks good. Looks good. Winky face. Woo! More just looks down and blushes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and on that note, I think that's a good place to end it. So, thank you everyone. I'm glad that you all survived and the the l l lesser half of the ship less so but we'll <laughs> deal with that soon enough so as always thank you all for watching and thank you very much to my players for playing and we will be back next week bye bye Ooh. later bye, -bye.